I am heavy weapons guy and this is my weapon. She weighs 150 gigabytes and fires 200 dollar custom RAM chips at 10,000 rounds per minute. It costs 400,000 dollars to fire this weapon for 12 seconds. But I'm not paying for this weapon, of course. Hello everyone, uh, and welcome to my first and last tutorial on video making. And by video, I actually mean these shit posts that I keep making in my spare time. Uh, since I do not bother with any sort of ideology, I just use Adobe, uh, and it seems to do the job just fine. You can also use Vegas, but uh, look for a tutorial somewhere else if you want to. Uh, the way... Uh, <laughs> the reason I like Adobe, Adobe programs is that they are uh, incredibly robust uh, and have lots of functions uh, of which I use like 10% at most. But I think it makes sense if you start uh, with some really complicated program, even if you are going to just pen images because if you decide to make videos in something like Windows Movie Maker at one point you will reach uh, a moment when you want to make something more complicated but you won't be able to. For this reason uh, yeah uh, uh, as you might notice I also use 3ds Max almost never yeah also one of these incredibly robust programs so uh, pretty much um, uh, Oh, how should I even say it? Like, with these programs, uh, possibilities are endless, but our abilities uh, uh, are not. Uh, what did I even try to say with this? I don't know. Anyway, um, this tutorial will be a, something like a demystification. Pretty much, if you want something more professional, look somewhere else, maybe even pay. I have no formal education or training in this, I just do what I feel is right. So, uh, primarily I use uh, After Effects and Premiere. Uh, these programs are pretty similar in several ways, but uh, if you want to start, I suggest using only Premiere at first. It's uh, a lot simpler in several ways, so let's just see uh, what Premiere can do. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started with Premiere. This is how it welcomes you, so what you want to do is, of course, click a new project and set up a folder for your project, give it a name, whatever press enter and then you get something like this like empty project file now you could do something like try to change composition settings but i don't know how to do this maybe something like here maybe not i don't know what i like to do is i like to take whatever video that i have uh, with suitable aspect ratio or maybe even an image why not and then i just drag it onto something so let's do something like this like cg whatever doesn't really matter say this wait drag and uh, the program automatically reads uh, aspect ratio resolutions and it gives it some kind of a frame rate i don't remember which and i don't really care so with this you can pretty much get uh, started. You can use something like a stolen video from YouTube, right? Some kind of funny that already exists, where when you where you just make a reskin of a funny but with Umineko spray characters, or you can do something original. Anyway, so what we have here on the timeline, what, what is important? We have these like layers. Uh, these are video layers, these are audio layers. If you want to zoom in, press Alt and scroll. This makes it zoom. 
Another important thing is, I don't know, I guess this one. Yeah, that's pretty important. You can also change, I think, the length of whatever. So far, I think uh, it will be fine. Uh, I, I don't really bother with that, to be honest. This is good enough, because if you uh, render the file, it will automatically be trimmed by the length of the longest uh, sequence. So here we've got one layer, this will be, say, background, and uh, after that we can add our favorite anime girl. Uh, see, there is a media browser, but you don't necessarily need to use it. Premiere is so good that it, you can just drag your files onto timeline and it will understand everything. So say, uh, here's, we have our anime girl and she does something like, uh, I don't know, she starts crying, yes. Something like this. Just move it around, uh, see, you can do something like trim the length of the video segments or and audio segments as well uh, yeah pretty much and then we just get this interesting effect of one image being replaced by the other if you don't if you have like a lot of these images uh, you can do something really cool no, 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 that's not really necessary. <laughs> so, so you have our anime girl and say she uh, starts crying, so how do you make her say something? There's a text tool. You can use this text tool and, uh, and let's say, wah, yeah, good enough. And then you pretty you're pretty much done. You can trim the length of this text layer. You can use again this like selection tool with which you can move the text around. You can place it say around here. That looks good enough. And after that, one important thing that it has uh, would be that. have our favorite anime girl and she says something like wah and then uh, something else happens and we and she changes her expression uh, it starts to look like this uh, we can play the animation see how it looks yeah and then she disappears that looks good enough for for, for me but maybe you want something more fluid say see it changes it automatically. So for this, you have something called transitions. If you change the tab from media browser to effects, you can see all kinds of things which are pretty self-explanatory. Video effects, video transitions, audio effects, audio transitions. For now, we are interested in video transitions. In particular, I think for this kind of videos, uh, Dissolve is a good one. And we have a whole bunch of them, like what the hell is going on? Additive Dissolve. Never use it. Cross dissolve, this is a good one. Dip to black, dip to white, pretty much. Uh, if you have, say, two uh, sequences in between, you can put this transition in between them, just drag and drop. Then you can also grab it by the ends and trim the length. And so it, what it does is, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. It dips to black. Dip to white is pretty much the same. For now, it's not really what we want. We want to have something like either cross dissolve. Cross dissolve. Uh, I don't know why is it called cross, but see, yeah, that that looks kind of good. Or maybe even film dissolve, which is a more uh, realistic one, I, I think. But I think it's also somewhat more computationally hard. I haven't noticed. There's also morph cut. This one is computationally so hard that uh, I don't know. See, it's analyzing in background. Um, but it can give you some really nice results. Let's see. Uh, this transition in particular was actually made specifically for faces. Say, if you have uh, an interview, yeah, 
and you want to avoid jump cuts. That's what it was made for. But it's so computationally heavy that see, it's not even done. So I never use it. Pretty much what you will ever use is cross dissolve or film dissolve. That's good enough. Come on. Yeah, see? Finally. See, so for this, cross dissolve is kind of good indeed, yeah. But most of the time you would use something like here. So for audio, pretty much the same. You just drop the audio files around here, trim them as you like. If you're going to use files from Umineko or something, you will have to reconvert them into WAV or MP3. Because it doesn't read org files. Sound effects are already WAV, so it will be fine. <laughs> well, what's the next thing? Say you, you want like uh, this copied several times. You should hold ALT and then drag it and release. Drag it and release. And um, the reason it's good because it uh, retains the attributes from here to here and here. And you say you want to have one text here, another here, another here. It will remain aligned. So you can go around here. This is important This one, to move this marker around. And you can change the text uh, uh, like this. And it will be at the same place. This is so good. Why hasn't anyone told me that before? And that's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to text. You might be also somewhat more interested in uh, proper uh, effects of this text. Say you want to change the font. This font is ugly. We go to the effect control step, expand this text wa, and then you can change the font to something that looks better, like this. That looks pretty cool, I think. But uh, maybe even oh, this is just this is even worse. This is good enough, yeah? yeah? Pretty much same kind of things that you will find in Photoshop as well. And you can change an appearance here, you can edit a stroke, uh, something like here. And this will make text somewhat more readable. Uh, that's the thickness, I think. Ah, uh, yes, first you need to select it, of course. And then, boom, now this text is more readable. You can also do something like here, I don't know, why would you? I don't do that. Shadow, shadow is pretty cool. It should be black. Yeah, that looks pretty nice, but I don't use it either. <laughs> and the same thing, I think you can do pretty much with every layer. Let's see what we have here. Ah, I cannot do it here. <laughs> now that's, no, that's ridiculous. But if you ever want to have a stroke or shadow, you could use this effects uh, tab and you can just uh, type in stroke. No, it doesn't work. I mean, but, it, but I know that at least drop shadow. That one is definitely working. See? Yeah, now you can tell. Change the angle, change the distance. Softness, all the generic stuff you will find in Photoshop. <laughs> now the next thing, say you are fine with this drop shadow effect that you put on one. But what if you want to have the same on this and this sequences? What you can do is you can just select this drop shadow effect, copy it and paste on each and every sequence that you find it useful for. I only discovered it very recently, but it makes things so much easier. Unbelievable, right? How could I not know this? I have no idea.
Now, say you want to have this uh, sequence with a girl, text, I don't like text, whatever. Say you want to have this sequence with a girl to have her move around, so she changes her expression, which is pretty cool. We've got something like they are all, uh, well, they all have the same attributes pretty much, so you don't really get anything like really janky. But you want her to move around, say, go her from left uh, to right. Wait, this is from right to left. Doesn't matter. Uh, and of course, no person who is sane would move all of these images manually. So one thing you can do is you can nest them to make a nested sequence. You select all these layers, right click, and then you say nest. And it will be nested sequence 01. What you can do with that is you can go here, and now this will be also, I guess, a tutorial for keyframing as well. So, if you want to have some kind of attribute to change over time, all the attributes that are changeable, they have this stopwatch icon. So, you can press, you, you can change the attributes around here, say, over, all the way around here position. See, from now on everything we do, something like say here, and we move it around like this. See, it makes automatically a keyframe. Now, we don't really need this, but we want to go to the very end and move her so that she compl hides completely over here. So, what you have now is the animation that she moves from right to left and changes her expression. I think this is pretty cool already, and that's a really nice uh, start, if you ask me. Now, if you want to have more precision in uh, some in the nested sequence itself, say you want to add text to go with it, or add more expressions, you just double-click on the nested sequence and see it's a sequence inside a sequence. This is so great, and you can add more. You can even like do something like here. You can even add several layers. Uh, why would you though? Uh, they would cause some really weird overlap, but that makes it somewhat fail safe. This is why I like it so much. So pretty much it's not completely collapsed, but you can edit it. And uh, yeah. Say you want to change the timing, and you can do it something like here. Oops, yeah, if you do something like this, or maybe even something like here, yeah, that makes more sense. And then we add uh, this all again, yeah. Sadly, if you spread them like this, uh, these effects they tend to just disappear. And now, if we play back again, yeah, how does that sound? How does that look? That looks pretty nice to me. <laughs> now VTC meme is complete without a simple typewriter animation. And the thing about typewriter animation is there there is no uh, convenient way to make it in Premiere Pro, sadly. You can use something like uh, do it manually. Or you can have like a rectangle revealing the text bit by bit, but what if you have something like, uh, I don't know, something like a navy seal copy pasta or something like this? What are you supposed to do with that? Well, that's when we pretty much reach the point when Adobe After Effects becomes essential. The thing about Premiere is that it has pretty much excellent compatibility with After Effects. So what you can do is you just pre press here and you use Replace with After Effects Composition. And then it opens After Effects. And whatever edit to the text that you make in After Effects will automatically update uh, in Premiere as well, thanks to something called Adobe Dynamic Link. Some people don't like it, I don't know, 
stuff. Untitled project. What? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> I, I did not expect that. That's really, really the first time that it ever happened. Okay, maybe not the first, but I never really had problems with importing sequence to Adobe Premiere or uh, After Effects. Oh well. Ah, uh, man, this is so ironic. <laughs> Importer generic error. I don't know what is generic error. Maybe I should... Uh... <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Now I realize that if you want to have a text somewhere, you need to have somehow an empty layer or something like, uh, say, for example, a graphics, new layer, rectangle, it doesn't matter what are we have in here, we just replace it with Adobe After Effects composition, like I said earlier, except this time it should actually work. We'll see. Oh, wait, no, it's... <laughs> you're not supposed to see this. New folder for uh, something, something. See, now it works. What we can do, we just delete this. Add some text. And... Mm. Oh yes, by the way, it, I apparently did something wrong. What did I do? It's uh, in paragraph. Yeah, something like this. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we type our text. Doesn't matter. So one thing we can already tell that it's not really even visible. So what we can do, we Check the layer selection, and pretty much we do as we did in Photoshop. We do something like stroke, for example, except it's, it becomes red. Well, we can edit it pretty quickly. Dun, 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 dun. Stroke. Dun. Now it's visible. Right. We can move this around to lead here. And uh, yeah, what we can do now is we check our effects and presets, and we just look up, type something, a thought typewriter. You just grab this and drop it on your layer. And then, see, text, animator one, range selector. It has two keyframes. And if you scrub it, see, that's pretty cool, I think. You can also have some advanced settings. For example, right now, see, uh, units percentage, well, let it be like that, but based on characters, you could also use characters without spaces, words, lines, for whatever reason that you want. Uh, and now, if we go back at Premiere window, we should see that the text uh, will appear. Let's try playback. Yeah? Yeah, that looks really cool. And for most part, for WTC memes, that's uh, pretty much bare minimum. You can even yeah spice things up uh, if you like, because it actually has some video effects uh, and other kinds of transition. But this is like bare minimum. Uh, in this tutorial, I do not bother with audio because I mean audio. You just put music here, uh, you shove effects, uh, move them around, change the volume. It's uh, it's pretty easy, pretty much the control of parameters will be around here, and it's pretty straightforward. I think you, we don't really need all that much. <laughs> now, if you want to do something even more complex, to have more control over parameters, you could try doing the same project, but fully in Adobe After Effects because it has just about the same functionality, but it's uh, sometimes not that convenient, because here we see you can have layers and sequences. And Premiere pretty much mostly operates on sequences. Now, After Effects doesn't really have 
the functionality to work with sequences. So pretty much what we have here, if we maybe unnest, if it's even possible. I, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> well, anyway, it would actually have uh, one over here, like three, five. In Adobe After Effects, it would have five layers. So I will try to emulate the same thing. Now, what do we do? Uh, we take our background. Here's one. Now, for Premiere, you actually need to put the files into library first. You cannot drag them onto timeline for God knows what reason. Even though it says, no, see, nothing happens. You have, God damn it. Oh, wait, it, it actually worked. Well, whatever. Anyway, they don't show up in a timeline by default. You have to put them over there. So, where is our anime girl? One, two, three. We put them here. Now, uh, what we can see is that preview sucks complete dick. Uh, now, the important thing that you can do is you can actually like double click it to see it properly. And it says like footage. See, there's a composition and footage. Composition is final product, footage is uh, the media browser. So we can use boom. Now we've got a layer and it's, uh, yeah, that notebook now. We can see this is like the, when she's like crying, right? Good enough. Put it here, above above the layer uh, of notebook and uh, yeah, make it like I, I've got how much? Three seconds. Boom, one second. Then defa default. Boom. Yeah, yeah, I know. You need to trim it like manually this time, uh, pretty much. See to have these nice transitions or something. So pretty much, mm, mm, uh, yeah, about transitions. I think there are some transitions around here, like maybe this all. No, I'll, see, I really don't use them that much. You can do it manually if you like. Well, well what you can do is you can extend this. Um, like around here or something like boom and then play with opacity or something so uh, how to work with all these attributes of layers expand transform so what you can have like anchor point position scale rotation opacity anchor point is this thing around here it's like a center of rotation and uh, scale Mm, I chose the incorrect layer. Yeah, see. Uh, how do I reset? Oh, who cares? And then rotation, also pretty straightforward. You can also have this tool around here, which, you know. Yeah, this is specifically the anchor point tool. You can change the anchor point and it will start rotating and scaling from a different place. Uh, that's for later. If you want to show only one attribute, you can use hotkeys. A, anchor point. B, position. R, rotation. S, scale. T, opacity or transparency. Pretty much mnemonic stuff. Uh, fairly simple. Now, Now the other thing that you can do around here is you can also generate some things in effects and presets generate. You can have so many things. Oh my god. Uh, gradient, fractal, I don't know, just pretty much all of them need some kind of layer to work on. So new, solid, and it doesn't really matter. And then you can just drag onto this layer something like uh, I don't know. What's a glue gun? I have no idea. Let's see. Uh, I think it's not working here yet. I should probably do something like this. Yeah. Right. 
Ah, well, okay. Well, who, who, who cares? I don't, I don't know. I drop her fill, gradient ramp, gradient ramp, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas. I have no idea what's Vegas. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, now she's behind the bars. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, these are all pretty stupid effects. <laughs> anyway, now we want to do the same thing, right? We want to move her from left to right. No, from right to left. Okay. So it has a very similar tool, except this time this is called pre-composing. It used to be like nested sequence in Premiere. Now it's called pre-compose. It has some kind of options. I rarely change them. Usually I like to move attributes. Boom. We've got a composition inside a composition. And then we can probably leave the same thingy as is. And about this, we use, we press P, position, and uh, yeah, move her around here. Da -da 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 -da. And move her around here. And uh, now you notice, yeah, pretty much same stopwatch icon and something like this. But beside that, there's also this thingy around here, which I find very comfortable because, for example, if I want a keyframe, for example, to make her like stay in the middle for a little bit. I can go in the middle, press this like beep. Now we've got, we can con copy this keyframe, move this one around here, and move this one around here. Uh, why is this doing that? Yeah, that, there is one problem with Premiere, uh, with After Effects is, like really weird interpolation, but it gives you better control over animation frames. It has an actually decent curve editor. Oh, here it's called graph editor, doesn't matter. And now we can kind of see what is happening. This is like a um, interpolation artifact. We want this part to be completely straight. So we can change it, we can select these things, but before that, I want to tell you that always if you're editing something and you are working on position, you need to select all of them and press this button, separate dimensions. It, it, initially it makes it look even worse, but now we can get rid of these keyframes because nothing ever changes. We do not make her go higher. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you like, you can keep them or play them with them yourself, but here, we can control these all we like. We have, what do we have? This is like stepped interpolation. Boom, 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 boom. We don't want that. That's linear. Now this is somewhat closer to what we actually want. So we scrub, she stays there, changes expression, and runs away, all right? Uh, but we can also press some button like around here, easy ease. And what it gives, it gives each keyframe a uh, control like handles or something like this. So with this, you can actually have a lot more control over animation. See, we can have some really weird stuff going on. Uh, we can make it go here and then here. And how does it look, I wonder? So. Kind of, yeah, similar to what we had before, but you know, in general, you can you can go nuts with this. By the way, we don't actually need to see yeah, Y position on the X, and you can always select them, press this button. This will even them out. You can make it look somewhat more dramatic by holding Shift. Uh, this will lock on dimension. You can make this longer and this longer. So that will make her appear more dramatically. Boom. Uh, likewise, you can also... Well, this was really stupid. Let's work on one for now. See, this is like... Uh, you can have a different shape 
of animation curve. For example, you can get one this one around here and this one around here. And this will give a different kind of effect. It will move very fast in the beginning, slow in the middle, and fast again. And this is like the opposite. Slow, fast, slow. Uh, play around with this yourself. You can have uh, uh, this curve editor, graph editor for pretty much every possible uh, attribute that you like, except not on all of them you can separate dimensions, sadly. <laughs> Alright, one more thing you can do. 3D layers. Adobe After Effects supports 3D layers. The way you can do it is you just simply press this button around here and see. It already shows everything you ever need. So what we want to have the, here is say she moves around here, then she like makes a rotation around her, what's it called? Y axis, I think. And uh, scoots over. So what are we what are we what are we going to do? We are going to check first if it's really Y rotation. Yes. It is Y rotation. So uh, just briefly go out of graph editor, make a keyframe here, keyframe here. That makes sense to me. Well, maybe not, not here yet. Uh, we are going to still use the mode, but maybe 180. How does that sound? So, yeah. Do, 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 do. She makes a rotation and does that. That's pretty cool. You can always play around. Another thing that you can do is you can also create a new camera. Um, this camera will give you a bit more control over uh, things like perspective. And I cannot really tell you anything. I never change these settings at all. But some of them would like introduce more or less, mm, what's it called, distortion. Say if you're looking, up, if you move the camera up, it will have, as a rule, more distortion. So let us try. We can also make our background a 3D object and we'll try to play around with camera, what it can do. It's a 3D object, of course, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Uh, see, in our settings right now, yeah, it doesn't really make that much sense. You don't really see a distortion. But in general, maybe. Position. Yeah, I, re I rarely use a camera, so I don't really feel the need for it. And here you can see as soon as we made this background a 3D object as well, you will have to put it way back, otherwise you see it cuts in so the way you can do it is probably position and it's like the last attribute oh ah now and now we are getting these perspective artifacts uh, they would be more or less drastic depending on on the camera settings but i background i pre i prefer to just have it hidden Okay, so we have this stupid thingy, uh, and uh, you say, yeah, I think it looks pretty good, but maybe you could add something like a filter, maybe make it look like it's a TV or vignette effect, and for that you can use adjustment layers. Adjustment layer is a thingy that makes adjustments to everything beneath it. So, we have an adjustment layer 1, which is the same length as our composition. And uh, say uh, we want to add a vignette effect. And there is a tool for that. By the way, I really like this tool, see? See, it's barely visible, I think. But you can change it like more amount, yeah, see? This looks really nice. And you can also, by the way, put this one 
Oh, yep. See, adjustment layers works only on the layers that's beneath it, which is great. Now, to, uh, about vignette effect, it's not. It gives you on not only this shadow on the edges, but it can uh, simulate overexposure if you change amount to a negative number and it also looks pretty cool I think in a way yeah see this one becomes now overly saturated and you can probably play around with it even more if you like it's really up to you I think it's very artistic and you can also have something like old TV there's a whole three old TV presets oh bad TV oh no bad TV TV Warp old wig. I don't know what's the difference. I always use old and this is what it looks like a lot of settings man. I I am not go I am so not going to explain any of that. Do it yourself. Wow, okay. This looks really cool. Cyberpunk. Warp. Uh not so much. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff. If you want to do something like color correction. All kinds of color correction, kernel, toner, hue saturation, all all of these things. You just apply the effect to adjustment layer, and adjustment layer will apply everything beneath it. That's pretty cool. Another nice thing you can do, there's something called Puppet Pin Tool, which allows you to put pins in random places on whatever image you have. Say, uh, we go to Precom because we, we don't want to deal with 3D layer stuff here. I never even tried Puppet Pin Tool on 3D layers, but say, uh, say this one uh, will maybe, let's make her sway a little bit like left right left right so what we use is this thingy like pin and we place a whole bunch of them to make sense like something like here 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 see it makes some kind of a mesh uh, which you can then like make it expand more if you like this will probably look better uh, density, also some kind of thing, I, I don't know. So, uh, and the thing you can do is, uh, you can pretty much move these around as you like. And not just that, you can keyframe them as well. See, it already made a whole bunch of these, um, yeah, keyframes. Which really pisses me off, to be honest, that I have to expand each of them manually, but I don't know if there's a way around it. So we move this around here. And say, uh, yeah, on this frame, what? I didn't want that. On this frame, she will go like this and this. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And on this, she will go here. And then we can just copy these and paste them. How does that look? Pretty cool. And the other thing you can do is you can copy these three, move it around, boom. We've got some kind of silly animation. I wonder how it looks in the end. So in the preview window, there are some settings there about which I don't care. Cash before playback. That makes mo the most sense. The rest doesn't matter. <laughs> How does that look? Uh, I'm kind of proud of myself here. That looks actually pretty nice. The only problem is that I, uh, I was making some GIFs before that, so frame rate is pretty low. You can change it in composition settings. I. Uh, I wonder, let's make it like 25. I sure hope the timing will remap itself. And and it did. So now we should have more precision. Yeah? How does that look? I think it's pretty sweet. Man, 
I didn't even expect I would make something like this, to be honest. Okay, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what we what have we even got here? We we made this animation, and next thing I want to talk about is something called hierarchy and null objects. So hierarchy hierarchy. I think it will be better if I make something that actually makes sense. So I think I will make a new composition for that. Okay, so in this project uh, I put four anime girls uh, and um, I, I want to make something like where all of them would kind of rotate and do something. So, but I see it's like they are too big uh, for the composition and how do I make them scale uniformly at the same time? I do this, I select this, press S for scale or whatever you have it and you just see if you change one all of them change automatically this is so nice and after that I can manually do something like here boom and then like rotate her a bit and then rotate her a bit which one which one is it it's this one and this one rotation that's pretty cool. Now the other thing that I'd like to do is uh, for all of them change the center of rotation. I want it to be like around legs here, 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 here. Now that looks really cool. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Okay, but now I can do something really interesting. See this thing, parent and link. I can parent uh, objects to other objects and they would inherit their attributes or rather change of attributes. So if I uh, take uh, the lowest and uh, parent it to the third layer, like force the third. Now if I select third layer, see, the fourth layer, which is this one, rotates with it. And let's do something like completely on stairs. Let's parent them like this. So now we've got some really interesting stuff. So we can do something like, yeah, let's keyframe all of them. And uh, say this one will rotate in one second, like here. And then in the same direction, this one will rotate like this, this one will rotate like this, and this one like this. And if we play back, boom, that's that's a pretty raw thing, but it looks really complex. And beside that, if you want to rotate them around like a common point, all four of them, you make something called null object, which is like a dummy object which has a center of rotation like on itself and then you can parent like the highest parent uh, to it and you can do the same you can rotate this in the same direction it will look in the end something like this i think this is pretty cool <laughs> what else you can do you can do looping animations. For looping animations, the important thing is that you need uh, 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 to have uh, at the start and the beginning of the segment consisting of the same, um, essentially, like keyframes. Yeah, so. 
we move this around, maybe that's too much. And then we can copy these keyframes. I said copy. And move them around here. No, I wanted to just copy the, the keyframes. How do I, whatever, I'll do it manually. Yeah, so see it moves in one direction first, then in the other direction, then in the other. What you can also do, you can just select all of them and change it in the graph editor. Yeah, yeah that looks pretty nice. Uh, you can make them look more natural by clicking this. Uh, yeah, something like here. We did it. Doesn't really matter. So now to make it loop, we have like how much? We have three seconds. We want to loop it like three times. What you have to do is you have to press Alt and uh, I think stopwatch. Yes, and that opens some tool some toolbox called expressions, which scares me because it's basically programming, but for looping animations you just have to type something like loop out quote cycle unquote comma zero and semicolon that's important i'll just copy this and then to, i can copy that pretty much yeah to each and every of these and this will give us a looping animation. Now let's do a playback. Yeah. And if you extend the composition length, it will do that indefinitely. That's a pretty cool tool. Now I think uh, this will work a lot better uh, if we add some kind of background. So what you can do, if you want to scale them down, yeah, see they are kind of like out of bounds. Since we already have some hierarchy going on, you just have to use, you just have to press select null, S, boom, see, and they are all smaller. Magic. Hierarchy is really magical. Let's select this background or something. And this will be actually kind of a lesson on something called the wiggling. Uh, that's a tool or maybe like artistic uh, method which is used to mask the low budget pretty much camera shake but here it's called wiggle and there are several kinds of wiggle wiggle gelatin what it does is see it does all kinds of stuff to background i don't like it very much now for position it pretty much wiggles the position and for this you can vary how my how much do you want it to wiggle in pixels and how often? Let's make it like 5 wiggles a second, 33, that's good enough. And maybe scale a bit so that it wouldn't have yeah, any of these like black lines or like transparency. And that's not just it. Of course, you can also put wiggle rotation. This will also do some things. See? Uh, wiggle rama, wiggle scale, scale pretty straightforward shear it kind of moves one of them uh one of the effects one of these how do you call them whatever i can just delete all of them because i don't care i'll just put like shear see what it does it kind of like stretches but in a like in diagonal fashion or something Pretty much in wiggle rama, it does all of these at once. Pretty much. 
pretty cool. I, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Now, if you don't like the effects or you want to see the footage without any effect, uh, you can press this like effects button and see if they completely disabled. And if you press effects here, it's it's we've got it. Yeah, pretty nice. In general, there are so many wonderful things here in effects and presets. The only way to really find out is drag and drop on the layers that you have. Or watch a tutorial by Justin Odisha. Now, the other thing that's pretty interesting is that you can actually also wiggle not only position, rotation, scale, but you can wiggle anything. But for that, you will need, uh, once again, a fucking expression. So let's add some text layer and write something like uh, a new gang. That's pretty cool. And what we can do, we can add something like, uh, let's add stroke. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, color to the black, or maybe, no, not white. It has to be different, huh? like green. It will probably look bad. Blue. Good enough. Uh, see, uh, the size, color, and everything, they have this stopwatch icon. So if you press Alt to say size, boom. You once again open this expression toolkit. And for wiggling, you can do something like wiggle, open brackets, say like three. That's like three units and uh, say 10 times per second. That's not even supposed to be 10. And once again, end it with semicolon. It's like a stop sign. So now, see, see, it wiggles it. You have this changing stroke. And you can do it with every attribute, I think. The only problem is, yeah, you may not be able to say, have a, at this point, wiggle 310, have this 660, and this like 00. zero. You probably can do that, by, but I don't know how. Uh, there are probably tutorials around here. Yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> now, another important thing <clears throat> is masking, which uh, is pretty much like making cutouts and of the images that you like. It's pretty easy, and I think it's very important for Umineko especially, because Umineko it has some really nice uh, sprites, which are just a pleasure to work on. So, let's get some sprite, something like, I don't know, bear. Uh, let's get her, like here, and, uh, and then some, someone else, like Eva. What you can do, let's, let's, uh, yeah, do something like this. So what we are going to do, what I am planning to do is to put, uh, say, Baron's face on Eva. So Baron needs to be on top, always. Or maybe it will be easier to put, uh, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much like a showcase. So, take this pen tool, make sure that the layer you're editing is selected, and just roughly, boom, 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 uh, yeah, boom. And now we have this cutout. You can actually change it if we expand to masks, or maybe you can just press M. It shows all the masks. And if you expand the attributes, you can change many things. You can change mask expansion, you can change mode. For now, it's add. If you use something like uh, subtract, it will do the opposite. Uh, and uh, all of these, they are, um, they become important when you have several masks. So these are like logical operators or something. For now, we will just use add. Yeah, and inverted it pretty much inverts. Doesn't really matter. You can ex expand or subtract. Uh, 
the mask you can also feather it a little bit but it doesn't look so good maybe something like here yeah that looks pretty nice and then let's move it around yeah uh, it looks like garbage but you get the idea you can be a lot more precise say if you want to change just the mouth uh, then like zero out the everything and move these uh, points you can even delete some of them that you don't need this one is not really needed not needed not needed yeah 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 something here this one is not really needed and then you can move it around god damn it move i told you yeah uh, something like here yeah Maybe you will need to play around more with settings, like expand these a little bit. Uh, as well, you can also use pen tool again to add more control points to make sure it fits. Uh, see, this is like nose thingy, so we take control point and move it around here. Yeah, yeah, and. The thing that you learned already before is you can parent this thingy to the layer below. So now, <laughs> if I choose the Eva layer, it will move with it. And if you don't want to accidentally select the mouth layer, you can lock it. And you won't be able to select even if you really want to. That's pretty cool. <laughs> the other thing you can do. Uh, you can change the interpolation mode, which becomes really important if you are upscaling images so much. So for now, it's uh, I think it's called bilinear mode. This is bicubic, and this is supposed to be nearest neighbor. I don't know why is it not working. Ah yes, I am supposed. I am not looking where I should. I I should be changing it uh, in the mouth layer so first unlock it briefly and change yeah see uh my cubic looks a lot crisper but not crisp enough for my tastes i use yeah see like this pixelated look and the thing is that in premiere you cannot have this pixelated look you always have to use after effects for that i don't know why <laughs> another cool thing you can do Say, imagine you have like a million layers around here and they are all uh, like in different time frames. So you don't want to use to see all of them at the same time. There's this button here, which is like shy layer. So currently none of the layers are shy, but say you don't want to see the mouth just in this layer browser. You can press this. This makes uh, the layer shy. And then if you press this button, it hides all the shy layers. Boom. And now you don't see it anymore. Say if you had something like 200 layers, you can uh, pretty much select all of them, make them shy, and then unshy the ones that you are working with and press that button. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, now when it's come when it comes to rendering um, yeah you can use built-in render engine it's it's all right but i prefer to export the media add uh, uh, not add the render queue that's the built-in but i prefer adobe media queue use that and it has so many settings man like i don't even know let, let's wait until it imports the, the file. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, see, it's like before I used to render animated GIFs, but it really has so many of them. I I have no idea what that is. Animated GIF, AVI, AVI uncompressed, more, more videos, more like even images. Like I think if you choose PNG, it renders it, it is a sequence. 
the thing that you will be using most likely. IV uncompressed. It gives you the most freedom about uh, the dimensions. You can choose, I said unlink. You can choose whatever dimensions you like. God damn it. I said do it. Why are you not doing it? Screw you. Yeah, I don't know. It used to work. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think it has uh, probably some kind of lower bound. But in general, I think you'll be fine. You can change it all you like. If you don't want to be bothered, you can just choose something like uh, H264 Blu-ray. Uh, most of them, they have so many settings uh, that I don't even know. Uh, some of them, uh, they render the video and spit out the file, audio file the other way. I don't really know how, how it does that. I prefer using Avion Compressed, which gives you like uh, a file that weighs 5 gigabytes for one minute, and then you can compress it with whatever you have and upload it to YouTube. That, that's what I do. Let's do this. So, let's make it. See, I don't really like these mm, lines. Let's make it 540. That should be good enough. Yeah, see? That looks nice. Frame rate 25, it does, none of that really matters. And we will call it file. I think that's a very fitting name. File. Boom. The thing I like about uh, MIDI encoder is that it's really fast, unlike Vegas. And also, I don't know if you can see, but in Avian Compressed, the colors are so vibrant, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, to be honest, uh, I think that's pretty much all I know how to make these videos. So, if you don't want to see these tutorials ever again, don't forget to unsubscribe, dislike this video. And God forbid you share it with anyone in this world. Yeah, thanks for watching. Now I think I will work on on animation of Rosa Hushiromiya giving a blowjob to a banana. Goodbye.